Welcome back to Tales of Abject Fear with your boy Yakov. I'm here with Flame. Greetings. And we've got our boy Matt here once again to talk about more spooky stories he's encountered in Pennsylvania. Uh, so I think you've got something urban legend related for us tonight, correct? Yes, this is uh, my grandfather's tale of the hook man. Now, the hook man, that's a classic urban legend. I think everybody uh, has heard it at some time, and it's probably got many variations. I think the gist of it is that it's like a lover's lane scenario. So uh, I think the lovers, they're making out. They're they're doing their thing. It's dark. It's a little spooky just to get the woman closer. But then it gets a little too real when uh, I think on the radio there is an alert about an escaped mental patient. I think it's they say that he has he has a hook for a hand and as they're coming home from the date they get out of the car when when he's walking the girl to inside her house and they see a prosthetic hook for a hand fucking still s- strapped to the goddamn uh door of the car. Is that how the story normally goes? That that would be correct. That is the general gist and it's uh you know pretty much every state has their sort of legend trip or version of this story. Um but in this case, it, it was a real incident uh, that actually happened to uh, members of my family. Go on. What what year do you think? Give me a ballpark, you know. So this happened in about 1963 um, in the summertime. And uh, here in Western PA, uh, you know, things were kind of as it was everywhere else. It's normal. You'd, you know, take the girls out and do whatever, you know, silly stuff people were up to back in the day. Uh, so basically as the story goes, my, um, grandfather's cousin, Mark was out on a date with, uh, you know, this girl and uh, his buddy and his girl and sort of the local lover's lane was a road down to an old dump. Now this isn't like a, like a uh, landfill dump. This is a place where these, these used to be really common where people just used to go dump trash. Um, so there's this, you know, one lane road in that people will go back there and, uh, you know, hang out and, you know, fool around, whatever. So uh, they go down and they park their cars and uh, I guess they go out and do some stargazing and hang out for a while. And as my girlfriend's cousin, Mark, they get back, they come back to the cars and they get into his car. He's just about to start it up when he looks into the mirror and there is somebody in the back of the car with a hook, not for a hand, but in his hand, like getting ready to bring it down and swipe it right to his face. So that, at this point, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. That's absolutely horrifying. <clears throat> and it brings to mind other urban legends, urban legends about like, like ladies, check the back seat of your car before you drive away because there's murderers who have been known to slash the throats of women as they're driving off when they were hiding in the back seat. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's very like, it's very almost reminiscent of like the, like the Zodiac killings and stuff like that, where, uh, you know, you got lover's lane and, uh, you know, somebody either creeps into the vehicle or comes up to it. It's, you know. Uh, definitely something so, that happened a lot. I think what am he, he's he's a confirmed incel, like he just wants to take vengeance on people getting close. <laughs> yeah, I think right, that is like a masturbating machine out in the woods who can't get none. So you Remember, have to, you know, it sure is hard jerking off when you've got hooks for hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's exactly what's going on. <laughs> um. So anyway, so um, you know, my grandfather's cousin Mark's, you know, sees this and and he jumps out of the car. And this dude jumps out and, and this girl jumps out and he starts chasing him around the car. And then he's like bobbing and weaving, eventually jumps in the back of his buddy's car and, and his girl jumps in there and they fly home and they leave the car down on this one lane road into the dump. So they get back to uh, his house and he gets up to uh, who would be you know, my great uncle at the time. Uh, and he, he's an old World War II vet. So he's like, uh, you know, are, are you fucking kidding me? You left the car there. Like, well, what, what happened? What really happened? Are you guys, you know, token the dope? Like, what are you doing? And he's like, no, like, man, there's a guy with a hook trying to, you know, murder us. And he's like, all right, well, like, seriously, just hop in the car. Let's go down and get this, this, get this car. We paid too much for this, whatever. So they go down to the dump and uh, they get to the car and there's, nobody in it there's no damage to the car and the keys are on the seat and you know really weird so as uh you know they're getting to start off the car they look down the road and there's this individual and it looks like he has rags all around his face he's holding a hook 
just staring at them again down this one lane road and they don't know like they're just kind of stunned to see this especially my my great uncle who you know wasn't expecting this to be real and they said this guy looked at them and walked off into the woods any and any thoughts sorry, on the the nature of this person like are there stories about like i don't know feral people or crazy hillbillies or something like that also in the area or not in the area but this does you will know what's going on by the end of the story mm. um so yeah so they basically hop in the cars and they, they peel out of there and uh my grand uncle of course says like don't ever go back there that is spooky of course though that's not how the story's gonna end <laughs> he's gonna go back many times um, so are, so are course, the cops alerted at around this time at all? Um, as far as I, I, I was not told that at this point the cops were called. Um, I assume that there, there might have been something like that, but that's not what they told me. Um, it seems like, about, like he basically just kind of told his buddies about it. And, of course, people then start to hear about this and start to go investigate themselves. And, of course, more and more people start having encounters with this, this hook man. Ooh, we got a name for him now. Notorious. Yeah, right, right. So my grandfather comes into this part of the story, and he said that, you know, one one night, you know, Cousin Mark's like, you want to go down to the dump and try to find Hookman. And my grandfather's like, ain't got nothing better to do. So they hop in the car, and they go down to this, uh, this dump. And he described it as double parked the whole way down. Hundreds of people are in these woods looking for this hook man and yeah, that's a good way to scare him off exactly right right so uh he said that you know they're kind of just like milling around looking for stuff and they see that there someone spots a light up in the woods it looks like either a flashlight or maybe a lantern or something and someone's like let's go get him boys and like you know 20 guys bolt up in the woods after this dude so my grandfather is you know like me not the most athletic type is kind of huffing and puffing behind all these guys He's running through the woods and this light goes out and well, you know, nobody can find him. So they keep looking around. Eventually they come across a camp. There's a, you know, a mattress that's laid down and a, you know, a kind of a hastily built crappy lean to and uh, you know, some clothes and stuff. And they're like, well, this is really strange now. Like this isn't just an entity or like something that's, you know, out there like this, this could very real, well be a real person. So at this point then you know, it's becoming a big deal. Hundreds of people showing up at this place. They're really not supposed to be anyway at night looking for this hook band. And eventually the state police do get involved. And as the state police, uh, they go down into this area and they turn up with a 18 year old kid who uh, was, uh, I guess, as my grandfather said, was very mentally disturbed. (laughs) Um, and supposedly he had, he had at some point in his life been involved in a, a, a fire at a house uh, and he, he, his face was badly burned. That's why he wore those rags on his face to make sure that nobody could see the burns. And uh, he was very, very violent and unpredictable. The police had to restrain him and take him off. That That is insane to think that, yeah. that these stories that you hear, like we've all heard stories like this. We've all heard. I think many of us have heard stories about about like the guy living, the creepy guy living in the woods, or the the, the homeless people right. who fucking just pitched a fort behind the fucking in the trail behind the convenience store, some shit like that. And you combine that stuff with with the all of the urban legends you've heard about, you know, the guy in the back seat or the guy who's underneath your car who slashes your Achilles tendon, or like the crazy guy living in the walls in the house or in, in the in the attic or something like that. It brings yeah, it all very, it, yeah. very close yeah. to home. Definitely. Yeah. And there's there's interesting to see if there's weird stories that kind of crop up in the same area that have kind of similar vibes to them as as people. A lot of the people who I've talked to in the area, they sort of say that like, oh, it was like this this kid who is you know, the hook man was doing these other things as well. But you never know. It could be copycats as well. Yeah. I've heard stories like the Bunny Man. The Bunny Man was a very similar story about a a murderous, crazy youth in the woods in a bunny costume who'd show up with a knife, try to kill your ass. Uh, there's another story, and and that that was a road that was very close to this dump. Uh, a, a phenomenon called light, 
and uh, supposedly if you if you hop onto this road you know you go down this road a little ways and uh, a light would appear in the woods and it would follow your car and if you sped up the light sped up and if you slowed down the light would slow down and uh, supposedly it would progressively get closer and closer to your car the farther down the road you got and it would flick off at some point and uh, some people said yeah. that that you know was the hook man they, you know, he was just kind of you know he had two different sticks maybe <laughs> Uh, the strange thing about Pennsylvania is that there's always light, like in the mountain area. I, being being a driver, I've I've seen a lot of strange things in in the woods up in the mountains. Were you compelled to go toward the lights? No, I was on the job, so I was, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm no like no to... overwhelming urge going on here. No, no but like it, it's enough for me to be like, what the fuck is that? Like I, I've seen strange lights like shoot down from the sky, like um, like like a raindrop like into the woods. I always got my mind wondering, it's like, what's in the woods? Um, that that's like attracting lights like that coming down from the sky like that. Um, right. yeah, it, it's very as somebody from Pennsylvania. Like, what do you think is uh the deal with all this? like these lights these strange lights right so like i mean i've seen them too uh you know for instance like the the one time i was coming home from work it was like three in the morning and uh i saw something that i can only describe as you know those things like kids like they shoot off on the beach like they're like those like light up things that like uh, they're, i think they're like called helicopters but they like float back down they light up what almost looked like someone launched one of those across the road and like but like it was going super slow and like almost hovering as it went over the road and went down over the hills. Um, so I've seen stuff like that. My grandfather has seen lights all in you know in all all through Pennsylvania. Um, there's a lot of different things, and it sort of depends on you know how esoteric I guess you want to get or how metaphysical. Uh, so for instance, in my area, there's a lot of um, of limestone mining. And a lot of like new age types like to say that uh, limestone is a uh, is a conduit for spiritual activity, uh, so that you know a lot of this limestone mining kicks up stuff that was kind of been buried for a long time. Um, there's a lot of glacial activity in Western Pennsylvania as well that uh, some people who are, are proponents of these things say that uh, you know that attracts certain things. Um, another thing I'd have to say is is back in the seventies we had a rash spree of Bigfoot sightings all across uh, the state. Um, and almost all of these Bigfoot encounters uh, were accompanied by strange lights and uh, UFO activity as well. So it could just be possible that Western Pennsylvania is a hub for UFO activity. Um, you, yes. You hear the the lights all the time, obviously in the UFO encounters, but then the Bigfoot encounters, it's in like 50% of the stories I hear, whether it, it's an orb or, or it's like a flash of light or something like that. You hear right. it all the time. Well, even during the, the Mothman encounters um, in, in you know, West Virginia and then Point Pleasant, which isn't really all that far away from the Pennsylvania border, um, they describe seeing like twice as many UFOs during the same time frame as they were seeing uh, Mothman. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Um, there's a really interesting story. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys want me to tell it now, but about uh, portals in the mountains that kind of have to do with a dead spot of a supposed uh, UFO landing. Yeah, I think we That's can get that in. Yeah. We can definitely get that in. I want to I want to say that most of the stories I've heard about lights, especially out in, in like rural areas, like you hear stories about people in the woods that see these lights in the distance and they follow them and they, they don't go <clears throat> anywhere, but they're just going further and further out into the wilderness until they're basically lost. So right. it's almost like it's a yeah. lore for something, maybe. And that's my thinking is that maybe all of this stuff is connected to ideas of the fae or the jinn or like right. other beings that live on top of us but are not on our realm. But that that goes right into the portal thing. Right. That's yeah. like the uh, exactly like some of these stories they never made like the uh, missing four one stories never made sense to me until I started reading stuff about the fae. Um, and then, like, it kind of clicks at that point. It's like, oh, well, light goes off in your head. This this, this makes sense now. It's not just like, why is David Plays talking about, like, berry bushes and rock rock fields? It's like, oh, now I get it. That's very interesting. Like, I mean, we have our, like, we have ancestral, like, I guess not really memory, but, like, uh, stories, folklore stories that 
have the same uh, common threads with the missing 411 stories. Right. And uh, you, you were talking about like these portals and stuff like that. That sounds very familiar with uh, some of these phenomenons. Uh, recently, I, I went back into looking at um, uh, Skinwalker Ranch and all this stuff. And, you know, so it, some people say that this shit's gay, fake and gay. But, like, there, there's something that they keep on bringing up is that, like, they say that these orange spheres in the sky that look like they're portals to um, uh, another, another, I guess, another reality that, like, some people have witnessed, like, looking into these uh, these spheres, they see, like, a different sky. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's the classic, uh, you know, like predator for, um, thing at Skinwalker Ranch where, you know, it, they, they literally looked like it was coming from a different part of the world because they, it was daylight on the other side. Yeah, um, yeah spooky stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the portals that uh, that were described to me were in the mountains. Um, I, I met this guy at a uh, at like a Bigfoot conference every year. They have one kind of near me and uh, up in the mountains and. <clears throat> I wouldn't really believe what he said unless he he had substantiated some of the other stuff that he told me. Um, so, for instance, uh, he, there was a uh, an old Native American legend of uh, I think he literally called them like the Seneca Rock Elves is what is what he said they were. Um, but basically, they're like little people who live in in rock fields and uh, you know they're mischievous and they do they do things and uh, well anyway he he had pictures of these of these little guys. Um, on his trail camera where it like was picking up the trail camera and like you could see it like kind of looking at it and just like a tiny little face wow it, it was really creepy wow. was yeah weird. i'd love to see that that's the kind of cool shit i like this yeah stuff that that's it's just like and i'm just assuming here that it's like just grainy enough to be believable i know, know exactly I mean? yeah just grainy enough to be believable yeah it's like it's like you can't really make out like entirely what it is, but you can't disprove it either. So yeah. it's just like, That's yeah, gold it's like, right it gives there, you hope. Um, <clears throat> so you had that picture and he had pictures of uh, tracks that he had found up in the mountains of like three toed Bigfoot and stuff. That was kind of weird. Um, I so I knew he just wasn't like pulling stuff out of his ass. And the three toed you know? Bigfoot that that's uh, like the Ohio grass man, which we're very yeah, close exactly. to Pennsylvania still. Yeah, right. I, I've gone to uh, that's uh, Salt Fort State Park is kind of the uh, the epicenter of that. And, uh, yeah, I've gone there before and seen uh, that area. So yeah, it's it's real close. Um, but the portals he described, uh, basically, he said that uh, there's a there's a field up in the mountains somewhere where he claims a UFO had landed back in the day, and uh, nothing grows there anymore. It's just like a grass field, no no trees. It's just you know this open but, plain uh, in the mountains. Radiation killed the uh, right right that's sort of what uh, i think he was fairy circles fairy circles exactly is a good way to describe it. yeah yeah so he said that uh you know he liked to go up and hike in that area and you know just kind of screw around so he said the one day he went up there by himself and he said as he was hiking up the mountain a mist appeared kind of out of nowhere and he's like well it says you know it's not anything to really be worried about it was just kind of weird that it was was so high up in the mountains and then and to, to you know kind of explain PA mountains aren't big enough to like have like the mist that you see like in the Smoky Mountains a lot. So that, that you know, it's not like it wouldn't be unusual to have a mist kind of appear out of nowhere, but like it's kind of uncommon. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, so as he, he said he would go up, he went up through this mist and he said he, when he came out on the other end of this mist, he was nine miles away from where he'd started. Wow. And it was he said it was just a matter of like 15 minutes of walking. Uh, um, there was no way that he could have possibly have done that in that period of time. Um, so he this, this intrigued him that that this phenomenon happened. So he, he ended up getting a buddy of his, and they decided to go do this again. And uh, they're walking in that kind of area, and he said this time it, it took a couple hours for anything to really happen. He said, but eventually they got to a spot where this mist appeared again, opened up, and this time he said when he walked through it they were in a different place and he described it as like there were these big i think he said something like rock houses that he said whatever had built them had to have been big and he said it scared them so much 
that they basically just ran away back into the mist and kind of came back out on to where they were beforehand. Um, but he said that whatever was living in these houses in the mountains, he said that they, he said if it would have known that they were there, uh, he doesn't think he would have been back in time back to tell the story. So the implication is that he literally went to a, a different plane of reality, fairyland, right. as it were. Right. It may, where maybe other other fauna inhabit. Maybe there are Bigfoot creatures. Maybe that's where they come from. That's where they go. That's why they can't be tracked. That's why you don't see them. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a big that's a big theory right now. I mean uh I mean a lot of a lot of people like to call it a cope that like oh well you're just saying it's interdimensional beings you don't have evidence but there are weird things that do happen like this and you know whether this is true or not i have no idea whether this is just an acid trip i have no idea but it is kind of strange that he was describing some of these things in an area that is kind of known for bigfoot and fairy like activity you know these stories of people traveling like you know 9 miles or whatever and it seems it seems like only 5 minutes past something like that like going through these supposed portals puts another spin on a lot of the missing 411 stuff. And I, a lot of people have probably connected these dots already, but usually the assumption is like if a child goes missing, like the, what the assumption people are making, like their stuff is found somewhere like high up some, some like uh, some sheer rock face or something, something that this child couldn't have gotten up. And they find right. evidence of it up there. So it's like, maybe, maybe it's not Bigfoot picking up this child and carrying it all the way over there, which is what I think most people assume. Maybe they are stepping through this portal. Right. Well, there's also uh, the classic case of the, the kid in the mountains with his grandma. Yes. Yes. Where he doesn't like a second grandma, the one exactly. with sparks shooting out of her head. In, living yeah, in a yeah. cave you ask him to like poop on paper and stuff and doing weird things what yeah the hell? he was lured Tell out this he was, I've, I've, i don't think i've heard this, this child was lured he, they were camping i guess something like that he was lured out into the woods by what he thought was his grandmother but she was acting kind of funny she took him to some cave and in there they did some stuff she had some requests of him there was the the pooping on on paper whatever it was um, and the kid was looking around in this cave and there's like old timey weapons on the walls and stuff like that. And he notices that grandma has like sparks coming out of her head. And then what? eventually he's found, he's ejected from the cave when like he can't, uh, do what he is requested of him or whatever. And then they, his, he's found by his family and he tells his grandmother, I don't like, I don't like the other grandma. She's crazy. What? That's right. crazy. You want the creepy yeah. part of that? Oh, sorry, Flame. Go ahead. Uh, uh, back to you saying that, like, uh, people just call that thing a cope, like, uh, the metaphysical thing. Right. Um, like, they're interdimensional. I, I don't, I really don't think that's mutually exclusive. Um, I, I feel like if you're interdimensional, you could have a corporeal physical body as well. And if they, if these things, these Bigfoot are like, uh, like, interdimensional like i i don't believe that they could not have their own houses and stuff in in this mist that we're talking about and if you look at like the native yeah. american accounts which is i guess where the a lot of people would say the sasquatch myth originates they attribute supernatural powers to them all the time yeah, yeah. exactly yeah they're not just a uh you know, a lot of people like to say that, oh, they're just described as if they're like just an animal, like a whale or whatever. They either say really animal not. or human, and then they'll fucking argue amongst themselves what the Indians actually said when it could be something yeah. wholly different. Exactly. Um, definitely. There's, you know, if it's a, if it's a different plane of reality, if it's a different world that we're talking about, um, it could be a physical thing that just kind of has a, a, you know if we can go there right if if this person can walk through the mist and come to you know its world then why couldn't this very real thing come through the mist to our world um it doesn't seem like it, like you said it's not mutually exclusive necessarily it's not it doesn't have to be like a you know a time traveling thing that's popping up wherever it wants to well you know, i you know really just and i've that. said this before i think i really believe there are people on earth who are who have mastered meditation at maybe yoga to what to whatever extent that that they have powers to traverse other planes at will that they've attained yeah. those abilities i do believe that uh there's I, many I stories about it too. 
Babes. Yeah, I, I smoked a lot of fucking spice one day. And I was like, damn, I went to fucking future. And I was so pissed that I went into the future. But it's like, first of all, well, could a, a fay with a high spiritual attainment do the same thing? Are, could smoke there a lot be, of spice? Yeah, smoke a lot of, of fay spice. <laughs> right. uh, fairy dust, as it were. And maybe there, there could even be animals that have this kind of ability ingrained into them naturally, which could be the Bigfoot of their realm, which sometimes finds itself in our realm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean if you look at the the phase stories, I, I would argue that it's, it seems like it's more of a, a, a being that has those abilities. Cause like they don't really describe the Fey in the way of like a, like a metaphysical being. They describe it as kind of like real entities that have these sort of, spiritual powers it's very strange some of the legends it almost seems like they're not really being consistent but then if you interpret it in this way i guess it makes a bit more sense it's it's that Uh, inconsistency that that is very that is so folklore that it's just the way folklore is Um, that's what what makes me want to relate it more to to humanity to see them as a parallel of humans you know with different levels of attainment and ability and intentions yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of folklore, uh, they they describe these uh, fey individuals as, uh, you know, people just like you and I. Like uh, when they when they go through descriptions, like the only thing that's different and strange about them is usually the clothes that they're wearing. Yes, yes, so yeah, right. seems out of place, or out of time. Yeah, and the same thing with the the jinn of Ar- Arabic lore. Yeah, right. the, it's it's the same way o- over there. Not only that, but it seems like mountains have a connection to it as well. Uh, for instance, look at look at where like monasteries are built. Uh, the famous Orthodox monastery built in Mount Athos in Greece. Uh, Mount Sinai has another Orthodox monastery. Um, Tibet, where all these Buddhist monasteries are um, in Nepal as well. Uh, it seems like there is a a connection with the metaphysical world and mountains and uh that climbing them is sort of a part of an innate ritual to sort of take you to a different plane of existence i think and when i look at specifically the jinn lore they are kind of like sort of like the flip side of humanity they they are mostly opposites in a lot of ways and they like to live where humans don't like to live which is always difficult to get to places or places that that would disgust humans so right. like the mountains would fall under that category. They're out in the middle of the desert or out in, in like a, a forest where there's not many resources and there's lots of danger. They would talk about being like they would live in the dump in dumps because I right. guess their experience of these things is not what we're experiencing. Yeah, right. Um, you could also like uh, say rock fields, <laughs> boulder fields. Yeah. Um, but anyway, like yeah, even like, for instance, uh, just you're talking about the dump. Um I don't know, this is just kind of a connection I made, but I saw I saw a while back there was a uh, what they called a Shabbat witch in uh, Algeria that they had found, and uh, I'm pretty sure this woman was put to death. But <laughs> you know, <laughs> so the base her house though, whenever they investigated it, was like a hoarding a hoarding house. It was a complete dump, and it's kind of interesting that you you mentioned that like maybe in order for people to kind of have that control over the gin that they would maybe turn their own environment into a a place of filth to sort of invite it in another idea and this is right out of uh like hindu type type i don't want to say scriptures but it's out of their their you know field and they would say that the spirits feed on sense and that's why that's why uh like things like incense are so important to them because the good spirits feed on the good sense the pleasant sense but the the evil spirits they can feed just as well on the negative sense right yeah exactly um well i mean look at people who are demonically possessed in many cases you see a decline in not just their physical health but the health of their environment um these people are often living in abject squalor and it sort of seems to be kind of a sign that comes with it, you know? Um, also like people, you know, who are like, you know, just disgusting themselves uh, whenever they're possessed. Also, you know, it's like the chicken or the egg because it's the people with so little will that they don't care about themselves or their surrounding who are probably right. easily taken by outside forces that they don't even detect. Right. Exactly. 
yeah, it's definitely a connection too that you can make. So I think with that, we'll wrap this up. We just passed 30 minutes. I think that's some solid content. Until next time, keep it spooky, dicks. <laughs>